Creating good quality mesh is a skill you'll surely get better at through practice. We've discussed the use of different mesh types, geometry simplification, and mesh refinement. These are all good tools to have at your disposal when you're working with your own models. In this lesson, I want to add a few more tools to your meshing bag of tricks that will help you when you encounter problems. One useful technique is called automatic looping. Sometimes the meshing process will fail because the size of mesh elements isn't small enough to accurately represent the model. To overcome this problem, you can manually designate a smaller element size and remesh the model to see if you've chosen a small enough value. This trial and error process will eventually produce a mesh that uses the right size element. Cosmos Works offers automatic looping as a way to automate this iterative process. When you create a mesh, the Options section in the Property Manager allows you to enable the automatic looping feature. Note that this is only applicable for solids, not for shell or beam mesh types. You can specify the number of loops you want Cosmos Works to perform. You can also define a size factor which controls how much smaller elements will be at each subsequent loop. A factor of 0.5 tells Cosmos Works to try an element size that's half the element size used in the previous loop. The last setting is a tolerance factor. Tolerance is a measure of how closely the resulting mesh matches the original model. This factor allows you to tighten the tolerance as you decrease the size of the mesh elements. I'll leave these set to the default values of 0.8 using three loops. I'm also going to change the global mesh size to one inch. This value is clearly too large to produce a mesh, so I expect the automatic looping feature to step in and correct the problem. I'll click OK to begin the process. The Mesh Progress dialog box will show you an alert as it goes through additional iterations. If you wish to have automatic looping enabled by default, you can turn it on in the Options window. From the Cosmos Works drop-down menu, select Options. Go to the Default Options tab and select Mesh. You'll see the Automatic Looping for Solid setting available, along with the parameters we saw earlier in the Property Manager. Sometimes making the mesh size smaller won't resolve meshing problems. A failed mesh is usually due to problematic geometry. This can be a very small sliver face, a knife edge, geometry that sometimes results without being noticed. This type of geometry problem is also common with imported parts like I have here. When you attempt to create a mesh for a part with bad geometry, Cosmos Works will report an error. It tells that you can use the Failure Diagnostics tool to help identify the problem area. I'll dismiss the warning and right-click on Mesh to access Failure Diagnostics. The Failure Diagnostics Property Manager will list any problem components, faces, or edges. If specific faces are failing, you can attempt to create a shell mesh and select only the problematic face for meshing. This allows you to refine the mesh specifically for that face until you find a size that works. You can then use a mesh control and specify the element size that you know will be successful. Unfortunately, there are times when failure diagnostics doesn't help us identify the problem. In such cases, you can try to isolate the problem area by cutting away some of the model geometry. Start by cutting away half of the part and recreate a mesh. Keep cutting away geometry and recreating the mesh until the problem area is isolated. You'll typically find a small edge or face that can be eliminated by cutting it away or filling it in a gap. Another way to identify problem areas is to use SOLIDWORKS Utilities. This is an add-in that's part of the SOLIDWORKS Office Professional and Premium packages. I'll enable it from the Tools, Add-ins drop-down menu. Once it's activated, I can use the Utilities drop-down menu to perform a geometry analysis. I'll use the default values for detecting insignificant geometry and a listing of short edges, sliver faces, and knife vertices reported. I'll select one of the sliver faces and zoom in to the highlighted face. It appears there's a very small cut that either shouldn't be there, or at least it shouldn't be there for the purposes of this analysis. I'll close the geometry analysis report to repair the geometry. The easiest way to repair this problem is to fill in the missing material. I'll sketch on the bottom face of the cut and use the Convert Entities sketch tool to copy the shape of the face. Next, I'll extrude the sketch up to the top surface of the model. Now, I can recreate the mesh without a problem.